At this time, I'd like to ask Eric Sanchez <coughs> to come forward and sing the national anthem. Eric. <coughs> Thank you, Eric, for once again volunteering to do this for us um, this year. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as mentioned, I want to uh, uh, take a moment to welcome our elected officials that have joined us today. They uh, have taken time out of their day, and we salute them and honor them for being here. In no particular order, I'd like to thank uh, State Senator Mike McLaughlin, who's here, State Representative David Arcanti, State Representative Jan Giggler, Many, many members of our city council are here as well, led by our council president, Joe Cavo. Councilman Jack Knapp. Councilman Don Taylor. Councilman Warren Levy. Councilman Phil Curran. Councilman Dwayne Perkins. Councilman Ben Shianisi. If I missed anybody, I sincerely apologize. Oh, and our city treasurer, Dan Jowdy, in the back there. Thank you for yeah. being here. Yeah. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Chief Baker, Chief Harold, and uh, Jeff Barrett, who is a pilot with United Airlines, uh, to place our ceremonial wreath.
Once again, special thanks to the Danbury Police Department Honor Guard and the Danbury Council of Veterans. I'd also like to recognize and thank our first responders that are here today, our firefighters that are in the back, as well as our police officers that have joined us today. Let's give them a warm round of applause. You know, each uh, year that we assemble here, you think it's going to be a little bit easier that the emotions of today won't be as raw or as close to the surface as they really are. But the reality is, is that it seems every September 11th that here, at least in this part of the United States, we can never really ever forget any of the people, the events, and the stories of that horrific day. It is forever ingrained in our culture, it's forever ingrained in our minds, and particularly our national psyche. So I'm appreciative that you've come here today. And I appreciate that you've taken time out of your day to recognize and remember the names that are listed on the inside of that glass monument. And certainly all of us can renew our faith in our city, our state, and our country by taking part in a ceremony like this today. It is indeed an honor for me to be here. And I know that it's an honor for you to be here as well. It's our tiny little way to say we're so sorry to the families that are here today and certainly to thank our first responders and to honor the fighting men and women who even today, 12 years later, are spanning the globe defending our rights to liberty. At this time, I'm going to ask Amanda Higley to come forward and sing God Bless America. Both Amanda and Robin, who you heard from earlier, uh, their father passed away uh, on September 11th. And I remember seeing Amanda when she was this high, and Robin I held in my hands in my office many, many times uh, after that terrible day. But each year they've come back, no matter where they are in the world and where school they're going to and what they're traveling, uh, to salute their father, but also to be with us as, as their community. And it's indeed an honor and a privilege uh, to have them here. So when Amanda sings, she always likes it when everybody sings along. So please feel free to join in. Amanda. God bless America, the land that I love. Deacon Bill to come forward in a moment to uh, give our, our closing uh, prayer. But uh, as you know, after the conclusion and the closing prayer, we, we uh, encourage you and, and ask that you spend a moment going forward and, and, and viewing this beautiful monument. One of the things you'll notice if, you, if you're down this way a lot during the entire year, on special occasions for residents, birthdays, anniversaries, uh, special things that might mean something to somebody whose name is listed on that uh, glass insert, uh, you'll find memorabilia. You might find flowers. You might find a card. You might find uh, a baseball glove or a pair of sneakers, something that was special between those people. So it indeed has become a touchstone, if you will, uh, for all of our residents who were so deeply impacted by the events of September 11th. So as we uh, conclude the prayer, uh, we'll then ask families who wish to uh, visit for a minute with the memorial go first, and then anybody else I can follow up behind them, but we do ask that you give the courtesy to the families of those who were lost first. So with that, I'm going to call Deacon Bill Murphy 
forward for the closing prayer. We bow our heads once again. Lord, as we go our separate ways this evening, let us keep the memory of September 11th, 2001, fresh in our memories. Let us not forget the apocalyptic events of that day. Let us always remember and cherish the memories of all who perished and all who served so valiantly during that ordeal. We pray for all those who serve today to protect us from further attempts at terrorism. We pray that all be kept safe from weapons of hate and death and from all those who would use them to further their evil plans. We also pray that you protect us and you are creator and Lord, banish violence and hatred in our time. And finally, we give thanks for our precious gift of freedom, and for all of the gifts that you have given to us as a people. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Deacon Bill. Appreciate your participation and all and your participation at just about every veterans event we have. It's uh, uh, refreshing to have you here and, and certainly an honor uh, to have you throughout the year. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you for uh, coming here uh, this afternoon. And at this time, we'll have uh, folks line up and uh, I'll ask PJ if he can come forward and we can move the podium so people can uh, visit with the memorial. Thank you very much. May God bless you and may God bless the greatest nation on earth, the United States of America.